Okay, so we have a couple options here. Right now we are interested in deploying an SSTP supportive Windows Server 2016. So we could go Vulture Cloud Compute, that's VC, VC2, or Dedicated Instance. Just for stability, we're gonna go with Dedicated Instance and we will run this out of Chicago. We're gonna go with Windows 2016. It's gonna cost us roughly 11 cents an hour. Kind of a pain in the ass. If anybody could become VIP on our website, that would super freaking help out because I am trying to launch a VPN for anyone that wants to use it all around the world. And the goal is to ideally to launch VPNs across different parts of the world where you can basically select the server that you would like to use. Now, right here, we're going with the 120 gig dedicated. We're gonna name this uh, what are what we're gonna name this Chicago so Chicago r 4 p 3net and we'll deploy this and it, it's gonna take a little bit to install but as soon as it installs I will show you guys what I'm working with here okay now basically we are just connecting into the system it's an administrator I'm gonna toss in our password there to authenticate we're gonna say yes and we should be connected into our Windows server. Full screen this. And right away, we're gonna go into add roles and features. Let's say, come on, add roles and features. Next, role based, next. Next, remote access. And we also want a web server, so IIS. Next, next, next. We'll get direct access, um, and we'll also get routing. So we'll do next, next. It's gonna give us all this delicious stuff here. I'll restart the server if it's required, click install, and it's gonna take a while. So let this process go on, and once this is finished, we'll get back into working on this. Okay, right away, we're gonna start off by going into add roles and features. As soon as this actually fully loads up. Come on, this is supposed to be a dedicated server. It should be a little fast. Okay, so click next, next, next. We're gonna find remote access. Check the box. And we also want web server, IIS. Add features, next. And we'll just be able to next. Well, yeah, we'll do next, next. We're gonna check for, um, we're gonna get this set up. So we want the direct access and VPN, RES, and we also want routing. Next, next, next. And we'll just say, we'll restart it if it needs to. I don't think it does, but fuck. Uh, so now that we're, we're doing that, we should be able to click configure this local server. And we're gonna change IE enhanced security to off for administrators open up IE, just click OK. I'm gonna say let's encrypt Windows simple. So up here, we're gonna click the, the GitHub for the let's encrypt when simple. Scroll down a bit, we're looking for latest release. If we scroll down some more, we're gonna find a zip. So we're under downloads, we'll find the zip file. Click open. I'm just gonna create a folder on the desktop called LE for Let's Encrypt. We're gonna drag this over here to extract the contents and we're pretty much set. The only thing we're waiting for is for the installation to finish, which this should finish up pretty shortly.
So it is finished and we're going to go straight into IIS, right click, click Internet Information Services Manager. We're going to go straight down to sites and we're going to start by delete, deleting the default site. We don't really need that there. So click add website. We're going to say chicago.r4p3.net and we will go into inet pub www root make new folder let's call this chicago click ok and for the ip address we'll just say 104. host name is going to be the same thing as site name and make sure it's chicago.r4p3.net or, or whatever your subdomain and tld you know the the full domain is and we'll start the website immediately. So a cool thing is now that we have this started, I should be able to go to this and we're gonna get forbidden. This is perfectly normal. The reason why is because we don't have anything in here. If we wanted to, we could create a new text document, go under view, show file name extensions. We can just call it index.html. Launch this in notepad. And throw in a header, it just says hello. Now if we reload it, we'll see obviously, hello. Now that's not the important part though. The important part is getting the certificate. So we'll just go ahead and run Let's Encrypt. They do make this really simple. We're gonna do a capital N, enter one. One, one, one. Put in your email if you want. We're gonna say we do agree. No. And we're pretty much set there. So it's kind of good and bad news. Bad news, we gotta open up the IIS manager again because strangely enough, we actually need to export a certificate and re-import re it. So we're gonna export this. Let's just call it ah, uh, password and ah, uh, ah. Uh. Now we need to import that same certificate uh, with the within the personal certificate at the store. Now, if we wanted to, we can go back down to sites and really we could just delete the website because we're going to be setting up an HTTPS one. And the physical path is going to be the same under inetpub, www.root, Chicago. And we'll just select. It doesn't really matter which cert we select. Just select any cert. They're both the same, basically and we're gonna just start that right up. Now, another thing that we'll notice is that if we load this, it's not, it's simply not gonna load. But if we add the HTTPS, there you go. It's loading perfectly well. So now for the remote access part. Go into remote access management. We're gonna go into the getting started wizard. Deploy VPN only. And I configure next custom next VPN and NAT. We need to select both. I click finish. And it should get us should get the services started once we click start service. From here, we should see, well, well, you're supposed to see if 
it works out correctly and, and it's started up. So we should see stuff showing up underneath here for like ports. Uh, I mean, we do have ports, but we also need the NAT portion, which for whatever reason, it's just not showing. It's not showing NAT. So we're, it looks like we're gonna have to actually disable routing and remote access. And we'll just end up having to, to set that up again. And the reason why, I, I, honestly, I'm not exactly sure, but it seems like when it's set up directly through the routing and remote access area, it does work. And through that setup wizard, it just doesn't. So as you can see, we've literally just done the same exact steps, but it will yield different results. And as you see, we have NAT. Um, now we have two NATs. That's... <sighs> That's annoying. We're just gonna add a server. There, that's that's what we want. I don't, I don't know why it has to be such a pain in the ass. It's a really simple thing, but it's just a pain in the ass. Okay, we're gonna go into ports. Right click properties. I want to disable PPTP. Just like that, it's disabled. We don't need it. It's unsafe. As you can see, we mainly we were really only dealing with the secure ones. Now we're gonna right click guest, go to properties, security. We're gonna use Chicago, apply, yes. It's gonna restart the service. Okay, so now that we've got that, we're gonna go into static address pool. I'm gonna set this to one, two, three. It's gonna give us 50 addresses. Okay, so we'll apply that. And you should be just about ready to go with this. Only thing we have left to do is go into the, uh, the user management under your server manager. Right click computer management. Go into users. We're going to make a new user and we're going to call this one um, VPN. All right, you know what? Actually, we'll name it test. No, test is too generic. What? How about dinosaur? That's simple. Password is going to be dinosaur123. Dinosaur123. Oh, it doesn't meet the requirements. So dinosaur123456. Dinosaur. Five, six. Okay, you know what, dude? Fuck it. We're just going to make it rape network with a capital N and that should allow it to come on we're gonna uncheck this make it so the account doesn't expire or the password doesn't expire a password can't be changed then we're gonna come into dial in and allow access apply okay and it should be straightforward from there we should be able to just VPN right in so we give the VPN a try now And notice we're selecting SSTP. It 
It's aborting the connection. Let's figure out why. Okay, we're gonna go into remote access management. Well, it's already running actually. It should be ready to go. We're going to stop it and start it. There you go, you're all set. So now you would be connected via SSTP to the Windows server. Your IP address is gonna be masked and I'll show you what an IP leak looks like. All right, and this is all that is exposed. You can see we're showing up with the dedicated instance IP address. The IP address pulled out by WebRTC is just the 1231231231 one that we set up and there you go, and it should be all set then.